reactions continue to trail the announcement by the Department of State Services that some politicians and their collaborators have finalized a plot to install an interim national government in Nigeria and stop the swearing-in of the president-elect. A section of supporters of the ruling All Progressives Congress says the sinister attempts to stall the inauguration of the president-elect, Bola Tinubu, will fail. Arise correspondent Godfrey Shimoge reports. It's a sense of euphoria by scores of APC supporters at the Unity Fountain. But this now has a dark shadow cast over it by concerns about plots to stop the May 29th inauguration ceremony of Mr. Tinubu. It is very likely most of the supporters who have gathered to celebrate only have a faint idea on the impact of having an interim government in place. But for those who know, they say an interim government is unacceptable. By surprise, that some people who doesn't have the interest of this nation are calling for entry government. They can only enter their house because nobody, nobody can truncate the elections or to temper with our democracy in this country. The call for interim government is uncalled for. It is satanic, it is wicked. And that's why you see us here, you can see this crowd that, uh, that is here to defend democracy, to defend the mandate freely given to the APC and also by extension President-elect Ashiwajubola Ahmed Tinubu and also Senator Kashim Shetima. The tension around the presidential polls, they insist, is a needless waste of energy as it is now time to rebuild a broken and divided country. We are also using the opportunity to speak to Nigerians, you know, particularly those who did not vote for Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to understand that the elections have now happened. We now have a, a president-elect. Let us all come together, you know, to support Bola Ahmed Tinubu, you know, to deliver the dividends of democracy, which is basically improving the living conditions of all Nigerians. It has been a season of protests in recent weeks, mostly a fallout of recent elections. But this group says enough is enough. It is therefore calling on authorities to come out hard against street protests. Enough of these street protests and campaigns defacing the name of Nigeria. The international communities are watching and we, as the major leaders of this country, we no longer want anybody in this country to find any form of amber of discord or disunity anymore because any attempt or attempted attempt fought with we are going to invoke Aluta Wizardry on whosoever that is involved. With the presidential election tribunal set to begin hearing the petitions of those seeking to nullify the presidential polls, the growing uncertainty around the polity subsists. Godfrey Eshemoge, Arise News. We sure won't invoke that kind of wizardry. And no, wizardry we don't even have the skills we to do that. Issues. <laughs> so joining right. us now is lawyer and member of the All Progressives Congress, Gani Arobo. Thanks very much uh, right. for coming to Newsnight. Thank you very much for yes. having me. Tell us, you just think that uh, the DSS is flying a kite? You think truly there are uh, masked faces yet to be unmasked that are truly behind, you know, subverting? Uh, the will of the people? First of all, I will begin by saying that the DSS is a very serious organization. In the build-up to the general elections, there were general allegations made by Chief Femi Fani Kayode, alleging that some people had plans to foist an interim government on Nigeria. And the DSS reacted immediately. They invited him for questioning, and particularly privy to the fact that as soon as he left the DSS, the police also invited him to further interrogate the reason for that kind of proclamation in public. And since that time till date, it seems that a lot of things have happened. So for this DSS to come out and issue this statement now, Nigerians must, Nigerians must take them very seriously. And there is a bit of background to what we believe informed why the DSS had to do what it has done. Mm -hmm. And that background is that since the election of February 25th, there has been a lot of talk about why 
the election did not go as so many people had intended it to go, which is justifiable in a democracy. But some people have actually gone overboard. We have seen people go to the military defense headquarters to literally ask for the military to intervene in our democracy. Now, that's a very problematic thing to deal with. So if you have that, a serious DSS will definitely have to take steps. So if the DSS comes up to say that they have information that entrenched interests mm -hmm. are at it, again, to undermine our democratic process, Nigerians should take them very seriously. Well, it's not the first time the DSS will be coming out with such warning. I recall in 2019, before the election, there was something similar where the DSS had raised an alarm that there were plans to disrupt you know, the system. And about three weeks before the February 25 election, Tinubu himself actually raised the alarm that there were plans to scuttle the February 25 election. Do you think it serves any good purpose when the DSS comes out with this uh, kind of alarm? Because you hear people say, look, the DSS should just come out and say, look, we have arrested some people who are found to be complicit in yeah. plans to disrupt you know, yeah. the free flow of our democracy. Yeah, I believe that in, in addressing a security problem, there are different layers and levels to it. Now, it's like somebody who plans to rob under the cover of darkness. By merely shining the light on that spot, you have dealt with that security threat. So maybe the DSS on its own have assessed the threat and have discovered that it is at its very infancy. So by merely putting out a statement, the participants, criminals, the, cri the principal actors will scamper for safety and abandon the plot. Now, I'm sure that they will continue to evaluate developments. If they see, since they already have enough to come to the conclusion that there is a, there is a plot and an attempt to scuttle our democratic process, they will continue to look at that information, those intelligence. And if they see that it materializes to a point where it becomes a significant threat, I believe that they have the tools and the capability to respond almost immediately. Mm -hmm. We should be uh, confident in the fact that they have identified this almost as it seems now in its infancy. Then we can look around us also as Nigerians. We have no other country, right? We have no second address. This is the only country that we have. We can look around us and say, look, these are the areas of tension that we need to de-escalate. Elections were conducted, and the law is very clear. When you are dissatisfied with the process or the outcome, you go to court. Fortunately, five of the several political parties that uh, contested in the election mm -hmm. have filed petitions. They have served parties. The parties are preparing their responses, and very soon the legal fireworks will begin. So why don't we allow this process you know, to materialize? Fortunately, some of the principal actors the candidates and now the president elect are not strange to legal the legal process in a post election scenario. Peter Obi himself is a product of you know post election litigation. Atiku has done it for years. Asiwaju is credited, you know, for supporting the process that led to obtaining the uh, the mandate stolen by PDP across several states in the southwest. Our electoral jurisprudence in Nigeria today owes his credit to the work done by parties like ACN and AC years back. So going to court after an election becomes uh, uh, a bit contentious the way this one seems like, because it was indeed a keenly contested election. Mm. So going to court is a recourse that everybody should wait for and hope in. And then the, the next step to it is that you then find senior lawyers who go out there and make skating remarks you know, in, in, impugning the integrity of the judicial, the judicial system. Mm -hmm. That does not help. It literally pours more fear in the fire for people who do not interact with the legal system because senior lawyers whom they hold in high esteem are issuing these public opinions and denigrating the system that they ought to invest their own hopes in, that assuming there was a wrong, that system will right it. So everybody just needs to play their part. The DSS will not do this alone. Everybody will have to speak up if they see something. All of this, no. is it an indication that our democracy is still very fragile in spite of the 24 years or 24 year run so far? So on the 6th of January, right, we remember the January 6th incident in America. Right. America is an almost 200 years, if not more than 200 years, democrat democratic institution, uh, nation. Even their own democracy was tested. Mm. What does that 
tell us, as long as you have human beings who have given to themselves a system of governance that has to do with politics and everything and the leanings that comes with politics, there will be intense contestation. The system will be tested. So right. our democracy is not, it's not, uh, it is fledging, it is young, but it is not incapable of managing. The, this crisis is part of what f creates the backbone for our democratic experience. But it does not look as if uh, that is what is playing out immediately since after the 25 uh, uh, February presidential election. A lot of ethnic jingoism, yes. religious uh, smears and, you know, snares and yes. the rest. Is that how uh, to nurture the okay. fledging democracy? Uh, um, admittedly, I think we have anybody who has followed the political evolution of Nigeria as a country, particularly since 1999, both religion and ethnicity have played some role, but they have remained behind the scene at the background. Unfortunately, in this election, mm -hmm. it seemed that somebody, we all stared the honest nets, and some people are more guilty than others, in the way that we decided to weaponize religion and literally test the fault lines, you know, that define mm -hmm. us as a nation. Now, that election is done and dusted. Everybody voted the way they wanted to vote. Mm. There are still elections that are inconclusive as we speak now, local elections. And those issues are still tension points in those elections. So the narrative for us and from APC and the president, the president elect, who was elected to rule over Nigeria and lead this country, you know, in the right way, is that look, elections are over. Let us start having a conversation on how we would govern and lead this country out of the woods. Mm. Oh, well, right. the, the Labour Party, just before we let you go, yes. uh, the Labour Party in its reaction, part yes. of what it said was that, yes. look, this might just be an attempt uh, to intimidate uh, Nigerians. Mm. I, is that your reading of the DSS you statement? Know, statement? Now, now, if the DSS already had a history of intimidating people who expressed their views lawfully, then I would have aligned with what the Labour Party man had to say. Mm -hmm. But the DSS doesn't seem to have that record. And the Labour Party, with due respect to whoever is on that ticket, particularly the vice presidential candidate, has not helped in this matter. There were incendiary comments that he made as it relates to whether or not the president-elect should be inaugurated, whether or not he recognizes him as a president-elect. These are not, for a person who is already in court, these are not statements that helps in a moment like this. If this country burns, nobody has anywhere else to go. I'm not from Mauritania. I'm from Nigeria. So Don't the reality is that... the statement was misconstrued or taken a bit overboard? But we heard him. We heard him say it. We heard him say those words. And those are the kind of things that befit the office of a vice president. Regardless, because the equanimity of a person in his moment of defeat is a testament of his dignity in a moment of victory. Mm. So if you cannot handle defeat, then you are telling us that we should be glad we dodged the bullets. You ought right. to demonstrate the gentility and access the available routes for redress, known to law, not to turn the entire uh, uh, process into a circus that now threatens to undermine the entire nation, just because even him himself was a victim of an election that was upturned. Mm. Whoever went to court did not come to his house to forcefully approach him from that position, he went to court. Well, All they have right, also uh, gone to court in this instance. Indeed. Absolutely. So, yeah. so we'll just wait for the fireworks to really begin. You in know, the we, we are showing you, not yeah. outside of it. We are showing you that our, our of lawyers of are doing it. excellent it's all right. work. All the lawyers uh, will put on their gabs and uh, we'll see what uh, they come up with.